Hello, this is George Urbacek of creativebasslessons.com with another lesson for the absolute beginner bass guitar player. Now even if you're not an absolute beginner and you'd like to revisit the beginnings, this would be a good lesson to start. This is actually the second lesson in the beginner series. The first lesson just covers the parts of the bass guitar, so you might even want to have a look at that video as well. Anyway, in this lesson we're going to look at the plucking or the striking hand for most bass players, or at least for right-handed bass players, or for those left-handed bass players playing a right-handed bass, the, stri the striking hand will be the right hand. So we'll look at how that works, and the reason for that, we won't even use any left hand at all in this lesson, so the reason for looking at the uh, plucking or striking hand is because we need to make sure that the rhythm is really good and accurate so we can play good grooves because essentially if the rhythm is sloppy the groove is not going to be any good no matter how good your note choices are. Okay we'll start by placing the thumb of the right hand on the edge of one of the pickups and we're going to use only two fingers of the right hand. Left-handed bass players of course just reverse the process. Those two fingers will be the index and the middle finger. Notice how I'm tucking in my back fingers, the third and the fourth fingers a bit. So they're sort of tucked in and out of the way. It's really important to do that because if the fingers are arched, not stretched out like that, are actually not pulling their weight. You can imagine if you go like this, if you have your fingers straight, they're actually very inflexible. But as soon as you loosen your fingers, they're much more flexible and therefore you can play faster. And because you don't need those back fingers, just tuck them in out of the way, just very loosely and have a look at how I'm placing my right hand finger. So we'll, we'll start by muting the strings with the left hand just by draping the fingers across the strings and what happens is you'll get this thumpy or thuddy sound so you're not hearing any pitches. So try that across all strings just make sure you get that sort of muted sound first of all. So you're just hearing pure rhythm, you're not hearing any notes, you're not going to be distracted by notes Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just strike each of the strings, let's say four times evenly, as if you're playing in 4-4 four, four time and you're playing four quarter notes per measure. So we'll start with the E string, the lowest pitch string on a standard four string bass guitar. So E string, then we'll go to the A string, then the D, and then the G string, the thinnest string. And you can see what I'm doing here, I'm dr actually dropping the thumb when I go to the A string, I'm going to drop the thumb onto the E string, and when I go to the D string, to strike the D string, I'm going to drop the thumb onto the A string. When I go to the strike the G string, I'll drop the thumb onto the, onto the D string. And the same goes again as you move down towards the lower pitch strings. So that's really important, that, that thumb drop. First of all, it has two advantages. It keeps your right hand fingers at approximately the same distance apart, the distance that the strings are apart from each other. And the other advantage is that when you play certain notes on the bass, you don't get other notes ringing with them. So you're going to be muting or damping the lower pitch strings with the thumb. So it'll give you a very clean sound without any low rumblings in there. Okay, I'll just start out first of all. I'll show you what the initial exercise is. So this is playing four hits per string. E string, A string, D string, G string, and then back again. Here we go. Here's the tempo. One, two, three, four. Now when you're doing this, make sure you're striking into either the thumb or the adjacent string, which is striking into the string and the thumb virtually at the same time. That's called a rest stroke. You're resting against a lower object, um, lower in pitch that is, not in gravity. Um, when we speak of uh, pitch on bass, low and high, we usually speak of um, like the low string being the thicker string, not the string in gravity, not the, thin the thinner string. So you're doing a rest stroke, that's really important, you've got something to push into, that enables you to create a very big sound on the bass, it's not a thin sound. So try not to do a plucking motion, some people call it plucking, in fact it's not, struck. Uh, it's not plucking, it's actually striking. You strike across the string, virtually parallel to the fingerboard, so you don't strike up from the fingerboard, not away from it. 
strike across parallel to the fingerboard. I'll show you that side on. Get a bit closer. See I'm striking into the thumb. Thumb goes to the E string and I'm striking into the thumb again and so on. Doubling up. And that doubling is in fact the next part of the exercise. So what you're doing is you're going to be playing two quarter notes and four eighth notes. An eighth note is twice as fast as a quarter note, has half its value. If you do this without having any gaps between string crossings, you're well on your way to being able to play comfortably across the strings and have a good groove. I'll show you how that goes now. We'll do two eighth notes and, sorry, two quarter notes and four eighth notes in that order. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three and four and one two three and four and one two three and four and back notice how I'm also alternating the right hand fingers strictly so that's another thing to watch out for go always go one two one two one two in your striking hand in this case in the right hand so there's quite a few things to observe, although this lesson might seem very simple and beginner, but if you get this right, your playing will be much, much more easy technically and musically. You'll be able to fly in the future. So spend a lot of time with this exercise. Of course, you can speed it up. You can play different rhythms. Just make sure you get the string crossings nice and even. You do that uh, thumb drop. And by the way, speaking of the thumb drop, I'm going to show you that uh, rumbling um, suppression that I was talking about before. I'm going to play two notes, an E and an F, on the D string without muting the E string. Let's see what happens. You probably hear quite a shaky, shaky um, wavering there. So what's happened is I've actually, um, through playing the E, I've made a harmonic on the E string ring, and that sort of then, um, um, in contrast with or against the F. But if I mute the E string, or even the A string if I like, I can tilt my thumb across and mute the E and the A strings together. I play the E and the F, and then you won't find that woo woo woo, that wavering effect. So that's another really good reasons to, reason to use the, the movable thumb and muting of the strings. Okay, that's enough for this second lesson in the beginner series. Have fun with that. Like I said, spend a lot of time with it. Get it nice and accurate before you move on to anything else. If you want to check out um, a complete course of online bass lessons, have a look at my website, creativebasslessons.com, and see what I have to offer there. Okay, till next time. Bye.